What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this guide, I'll be taking you through optimizing Wild Hearts for the best possible FPS and gameplay experience. This guide isn't going to touch on Windows at all. In the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else that may help you. It's worthwhile checking there if after this tutorial, you'd like to get even more out of your PC. That being said, have the obvious things done, like closing everything you don't need running, download the game, and fire it up. At the time of releasing, this is technically early access. If you'd like to know how, click the link in the description down below. All right, there we go. We've just reached the main section here. The game has literally just started, and I'm sitting at a cool 47 FPS on a 3080 Ti. Absolutely painful, and judging by the amount of foliage around here, that's probably why. But regardless, this is really, really low. Before we go any further, I'll hit escape here, head across to settings, and we'll start optimizing. On the graphics tab at the very top, the controls of the menu are a little bit weird. We'll need to adjust these top settings from the main menu. Though, lucky for me, I don't really need to change anything here. All of these are set properly. Aspect ratio should match your screen. Resolution should also match your screen, or at least be compatible. Otherwise, it'll be blurry if it's too low or in incompatible resolution. And of course, if it's higher than what your actual pixel count is, then you're just wasting processing power on nothing. Upscaling can help tremendously increase the FPS. However, for now, I've got it disabled. This will be your DLSS and FSR. But before we even get there, we'll mess around with some of the settings to see what we can do, and we'll come back here afterwards. The window mode should be set to full screen, monitor selection should match whatever monitor you're playing on, and HDR settings are of course only available if your monitor is HDR supported. If you have this on or off, you should see very minimal FPS impact, though there'll definitely be a huge impact on how the game looks, depending on how good your HDR monitor is. Scrolling down further, screen brightness and color vision deficiency support are both your preference. VSync should absolutely be disabled unless you're actually getting screen turn where parts of your screen don't sync up with the other parts. So have this disabled. FPS limit you should crank all the way to the right for unlimited. Otherwise, if you find that you're running OBS Studio or something like that recording and that seems to be struggling while the game eats all of your graphics card and available processing power, you can cap this to just below the amount of FPS you're getting, though you're a little bit limited in this regard. Anyways, unlimited is good for most of us. Then preset, this should be set based on what kind of graphics card you have. Judging that playing this at 2K on a 3080 Ti with the highest options, and I'm sitting at 48 FPS, this is obviously a very demanding game, even from the intro tutorial screen here. I'd recommend starting at medium, or standard in this case, and working your way up if you have a good graphics card, otherwise start at low or lowest and work your way up with a lower end graphics card. For me, I'll start on standard, just for a good middle ground. Textures should be set relative to how much VRAM you have available in your graphics card. With probably 8 gigs of VRAM, or 6, you should set it to medium, anything below that to low, and anything above maybe 6 or 8 gigs, set it to high. Model quality once again depends on the amount of VRAM, and the higher this goes, the more FPS you'll usually lose, but it's not a huge impact, it's more VRAM dependent. You can leave this on medium and work your way up if you find that you want extra quality out of things when they're really close to you. Texture filtering is anisotropic filtering, usually has very little impact, so moving this lower or higher should have barely any effect, though I'll leave it on low here, just as is. Particle effects. Obviously, if you're running around and whenever combat and things like that is happening, you happen to be losing FPS, this is what you should come back and lower. Set this to either medium if you're running around and testing how the game looks, crank it up if you're comfortable with how it performs even while in combat, and crank it down if you find that you're randomly losing FPS whenever this particle's visible. For me, I'll leave this on medium. Procedural density. This has to do with vegetation, and this will probably be what mostly destroys your FPS besides the option below here. I'd recommend having this on medium or even low if you're really struggling with FPS in general. For me, at 48 FPS, it's far too low. I'll start on low and see if I'm comfortable losing a handful more FPS for a bit more vegetation in the scene. Shadows. Obviously, you'll be running around. You won't be staring at things happening, but the actual amount of vegetation in this game is probably what's going to cost you the most FPS. If you find that you're comfortable with pixely, blocky shadows or blurry shadows, absolutely set this to low as there's so much on screen moving around that this is definitely going to cost you a ton of FPS. Reflections, once more, these aren't ray traced, these aren't normal reflections, they shouldn't be too costly, but leaving it on low or medium should be good enough. 
global illumination. As this has a big impact on how good the game looks in general, I'd recommend keeping this on medium and cranking it down if you need a couple more FPS. Clouds, once again, you're not going to be staring at these all the time, and cranking it down to low isn't going to hurt your gameplay experience that much. It's not going to make them 2D or anything. Anti-aliasing, usually I find that there's no need for this, and if you're using an upscaler, there's absolutely no need for this, so crank it down to none. FXAA just generally makes everything a bit blurrier. TAA is more expensive, but much higher quality. You'll notice this around the edges of objects and sides of objects. If they look too pixely for your liking, you can return back here to smooth them out. Motion blur is your preference. If you find that you suffer from motion sickness, disable this. Ambient occlusion, this should have a very little impact on FPS, but you can enable and disable it to see what kind of difference it makes. Having it enabled does add a bit more depth to the scene. Speaking of depth, depth of field. If you find that you're struggling to see long distances or nearby, depending on what you're looking at, and you'd like to see more of the scene in general instead of having where you should look told to you, you can disable it here. This will take away the need, or at least the feeling, that you need glasses while you're playing this game. If you find that you struggle with depth of field or just find it a little bit annoying, you can disable it here. I'll apply changes and head back to the game with just these minor changes. You can already see I'm on 52 FPS, not a huge increase. I can definitely notice that anti-aliasing has been turned off, but in general it is a heck of a lot smoother, even though we're not reaching a full 60 FPS. Just remember I am on 2K, so there's a bit more going on here than would be on a normal 1080p screen. Now with the general idea of 50 FPS in your mind, I'll quit here, back to the main menu, so return to title screen, and we'll play around with the upscaler. This is where you'll get most of your FPS, though cranking your other settings to be better suited for your PC is still a good idea in general. On the main menu, I'll press any key here, continue, and we'll head across to settings. Under settings, go to graphics, and near the top, you'll see upscaling. Enable this, apply changes, and when you do, it doesn't seem like there's any option to choose the upscaling intensity or anything. Very weird. Usually there's an option to do so, but we'll see what impact that had on our FPS. So I'll continue loading back to exactly where we were. We're now getting a solid 66 FPS, 70 even, though things are very, very blurry. That is very disappointing. This doesn't seem to be something like DLSS. This seems to be more of a custom upscaler, which is disappointing to say the least. Things are very blurry and I don't see myself playing like this. So we'll head back and disable this. I had higher hopes. Right, so at this point, even on a 3080 Ti, I'm struggling with mostly low settings. I'd recommend cranking down everything except for textures. Maybe I'll put this on medium, see what kind of effect it has, and I'll keep moving down. Ultimately, if you need FPS in the end, you can also lower the resolution here to say 1080p and have your GPU or monitor upscale. It'll be a little bit blurrier, but it should be nowhere near as bad as using the built-in upscaler. That way you'll gain quite a bit of FPS, especially if you push from 1080 to maybe 1600. There's not too much of a visual change just by moving down a single step, but you will notice quite a big difference in FPS, so do keep that in mind. That is a much more drastic step though. Then again, it may just be this intro scene. Immediately you can see this game looks infinitely better with the upscaler turned off, and it's at least somewhat smooth. It's a bit of a console experience with 50 to 60 FPS, dropping down to 30 I would assume on lower end PCs, but this is more than playable at this point. So I'm quickly scrolling through my settings once more, just so you can see what they are. It's mostly medium and low. Just for the heck of it, I'll crank the preset all the way down to lowest, and we'll see just what happens to this game. On a 3080 Ti, on the absolute lowest options, it still looks pretty good, and I'm getting a solid 60 FPS, though it is capped. So, graphics, VSync disabled, FPS limit unlimited, hmm, weird that it's sticking at a perfect 60 FPS, it's like that cap is still there. No, oh, there we go, 63, wow, 63 FPS on a 3080 Ti at absolutely lowest settings, but at least it does still look relatively good. I don't have too many complaints about how it looks, but of course, on lower end PCs, you're definitely going to struggle. Anyways, we are playing early, or at least somewhat early. Changes will come, hopefully more optimizations would come. The one thing I'd definitely like to see is the opportunity to choose what kind of upscaler we're using, so we can choose between DLSS and FSR2, for example, to get much better performance and visual fidelity from our PC. 
moving across him, shadows popping in and out, a little bit distracting, but ultimately it's not a terrible looking game. Here in combat, we'll see FPS drops and things as particles spawn in and out. There was only an FPS drop at the beginning of that combat, not too terrible, but do remember this is on absolutely lowest settings. So I'm a little bit disappointing. Hopefully this game does improve some FPS that is here and there, but regardless, you now know how to get the best visuals out of the game possible, and of course, relatively good FPS. We got it to around 55-ish, which is almost to where I am now on absolute lowest settings, while making the game look a heck of a lot better. So anyways, that's really about it for this guide. A little bit disappointing, but thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.